Adventure games are lame and visual novels are lamer. If I wanted to click my screen pointlessly for hours, I'd play HOTS, and if I wanted to read, I would have learned how to do that years ago. So believe me when I say that I wouldn't recommend a game like this if it wasn't a doozy. This game is a love story? What, you can't seriously expect a video game to make me feel- <laughs> It's a silly twist, right? Slay the princess. That's like the opposite of what you're supposed to do. But hey, it could be fun. Subversion has never ruined anything. Let's take a stab at it. You're on a path in the woods, and at the end of that path is a cabin. And in the basement of that cabin is a princess. You're here to slay her. If you don't, it will be the end of the world. I always knew misogyny would save us. Oh man, this'll be easy. She's even chained to the wall. We'll do a murder, have a laugh. Ha <laughs> ha, I played the video game. Do you actually believe this was enough to kill me? Okay, here's your second spoiler warning. It's impossible to talk about this game without ruining everything, so as much as I want you to watch the whole video for my analytics, subscribe. If you're at all curious about Slay the Princess, pause the video and give it a look. Welcome back, don't worry, we'll go over the basics before we get into real spoilers. The audio and visuals have a lot to shoulder, seeing as how there's no gameplay. It's a visual novel, you should know what you're getting into. Scene comes up, you click on some words, next scene. No wandering around, no fighting, just the sights, the sounds, in the story. I hope you weren't expecting to be dazzled by color. All the art in the game was hand-drawn with pencils, so the whole thing is in grayscale. I mean, there's a bit of red, it's used pretty sparingly, as a highlight for specific scenes. Everything is well drawn and easy to look at, but in case you're worried about your eyes getting bored, there are some visual effects that have been added. Parallax for a little movement and boil for a little soul. You can turn these off if you find them distracting. I tried the game both ways and it didn't change my opinion of the visuals. I found the little bit of interactivity that parallax enables coupled with the movement of the boil adds that little bit of life that still images just can't have. The audio is fantastic. Just. Mwah, spot on. I've been playing the soundtrack underneath the video, and while here I would normally shut up and play a few seconds of a few songs, I feel in this case, doing so would undercut the impact of some scenes. Music is so important in video games, and so incredibly important in a game like this. Because gameplay is non-existent. Computer books only have three ways to engage you. Visuals, writing, and sound. Songs being the best way to work the magic. Emotionally framing the scenes, drowning out intrusive thoughts, and grounding you in the fiction. This isn't the type of game where you would do such a thing, but if you're one to play your own playlist over video games, here you're doing yourself a disservice. The soundtrack hits all the right notes and will stick with you for a while after you've finished your playthrough. Not because it's catchy, but because of how it made you feel. The sound in the game is great. Good job. I'm sure they had lots of fun with the knife noises. We're gonna walk right past it into the voice work because there's more to say. There are only two voice actors in the entire game, but it sure doesn't feel that way. Jonathan Sims for the male voices, and Nichol Goodnight for the female ones. It's a testament to their abilities when you could be listening to a conversation between half a dozen characters, and you can pick out each one by ear even though they're all voiced by one person. The male voices range from confident to sniveling to emotionless, and the female ones go from playful and kind to downright terrifying. It's all played straight and delivered well. No winking at the camera, thank god. Nothing said should eject you from the moment. There was maybe, maybe one line from the princess that sounded off. It sounded like it was recorded on a different day or with a different mic or in a different room. It's not a performance issue, I just noticed it, that's all. Will you? Overall's good. It's good work. When it comes to options and gameplay, there's not much to say. Gameplay-wise, you listen, you read, you click. The end. It's a book inside your computer, well, what do you want from me? You can't really do anything, or go anywhere. You're at the mercy of the plot. The only exploring you can do comes in appropriately marked dialogue options which flesh out the world and its characters. If you're worried that these choices will lock you into a hidden decision tree, don't be. The game won't pull the rug out from under you if you just want to get as much information as possible. At worst, you'll get a cryptic circular non-answer or be completely deflected, which can be frustrating, but it's appropriate. Can't spell everything out for you in a game game so full of metaphors, kinda ruins the fun. Settings, like I said before, you can tweak the visuals a bit, turning off the parallax and boil, as well as flickering images. I hid the quick menu as well, didn't want these buttons distracting me. My immersion. Having the text auto advance could be nice too, but you do risk missing things. You can pause the game and go back over the dialogue, but it's not the same as getting it live. Ooh, accessibility options, text to speech, differing fonts, improved readability, nice. Didn't use them, glad they're there. Now, we've gone over pretty much everything without getting into spoilers, so if you're 
you're the least bit curious about Slay the Princess, stop the video and play it. This game is an easy recommend. It takes two to three hours for one playthrough. It's thoughtful, it's touching, it's terrifying. Just get it, just play it. I need more people to talk about this game with. Okay, last spoiler warning. Leave now or live with your choices. Time to give it all away. This game isn't a love story. It's an incredible love story. I haven't seen so many aspects of relationships depicted so compellingly. If you've ever loved someone, a lot of these conversations are frighteningly familiar. This is not the type of story to take literally. If you can only appreciate things clinically or at face value, you're not gonna get the most out of it. Nothing is as it seems here. Dying isn't dying, you're forgetting, but not really. Symbols surrounded by metaphors inside a mythology. Don't worry, it's not impenetrable, it's just... Not for everyone? Like, if you're the type of gamer that tries to outthink the game, min-maxing all decision trees to have the best possible outcome, well, you're wrong and stop it and just enjoy the ride. There's no right answers. No winning or losing, only choices and consequences. The game is about how your decisions reflect back to you. It's not always subtle about it. For example, every time you go into the basement, you're given the option to bring a knife with you or leave it upstairs. If you take it, the princess is defensive before you even see her, speaking boldly and trying to disarm you. What's that knife for, exactly? But if you leave it upstairs, she's demure and affable, mostly. Well duh, of course she's gonna be on guard if you walk in with a weapon. Anyone would. Ah, uh, there's... it's more... There's more going on than that. I'm not the best at explaining these things. I never paid attention in English class. She becomes what you make of her, and through her you see what you make of yourself. It's all so poetic. Think of each run as the start of a new relationship. The princess is living her life, doing her thing, trapped in a bland existence by habit or circumstance. Then out of nowhere, you come along with the potential to change everything, for better or worse, offering a new life and new experiences. But change is scary and death is a real possibility. Compared to her, you're a big scary monster, and even though you may not intend to use the power you have against her, how the hell is the princess supposed to know that? I didn't really clue into all of this until one specific root hit me in my metaphorical balls. Trust is one of the themes this game tackles. Everyone has, or will at one point in their lives, experienced something that shatters their belief in people. Putting themselves on the defensive, or worse, turning them into a conniving, spiteful witch. While there are plenty of other paths in the game that explore the idea of trust, there's one I think that does it best. It's a new relationship, remember? You have good intentions. You know, you're just a regular dude. You don't want to hurt anyone. You're out, living your life, and you stumble upon a princess. She's beautiful. You're smitten. Sup. The princess is wary, yet open to your advances. Life's pretty dull, and you're new. Plus, you've given her no reason to think you untrustworthy. Maybe you're worth taking a chance on. She willingly sheds the shackles of her old life, which comes with some sacrifice. But if things work out between you, it'll be more than worth it. And then, you betray her. Maybe you made a mistake. Maybe your hand was forced. Or maybe you had no intentions of seeing things through. It doesn't matter. The trust you built has died, and you don't make it out clean, either. Whatever happened is impossible to forget, and you don't get to run from what you've done. Well, this sucks. There's gotta be a way to fix this. The only way out is through. Do you mend the trust? Or do you twist the knife? No, it was a mistake. We gotta apologize. Here, take it. As a gesture of goodwill. Oh, she's not ready to forgive. And now she has the upper hand. She takes her revenge. But can you blame her? You stabbed her in the back. You kinda deserve this. Oh, wait. In her eyes. Is that... regret? Everything goes dark. And you die. Okay, let's try this again. This time there's barely a cabin. Whatever the two of you had is in ruins. Almost a memory. You can't even call it a home. And yet, for some reason, things feel... Hopeful? God, I love this game. Yeah, yeah, quit gushing. We get it. Metaphors. Hurry it up. Downstairs, the princess is a prisoner again, held not by a single chain, but wrapped inside jagged, thorny vines, desperately clinging to her only means of protection, but wrapped too tightly to use it. Do you get it? If she wants to move on, she'll have to trust you, even only for a moment. Forgiving you means giving up control. You know, she did hurt you when you tried to apologize, and now she's helpless. If you take revenge on her revenge, the score would be two to one. There's no way she can stop you. Come on, there's only one way out of this. Of course I'm going to save her. Beautiful. Just beautiful. And that's only one story. At the end of each path, the princess is taken away and merges with an entity that could be considered the final boss of the game. You'll have to repeat this cycle five times before getting to the end. There are more than five paths to take, which gives the game some replayability. Still, most of the magic is in the first run. 
I really don't have many complaints about Slay the Princess. There were a few times when I made a choice that sent the story in the complete opposite direction I was expecting, which weirdly should be expected. It's a static story which cannot cover the insane amount of interpretations or dispositions of the people that are playing the game. To the game's credit, it only happened a couple of times. Nothing like the curveballs old Bioware games could throw at you. Slay the Princess will railroad you at times, which feels bad in the moment, but it's purposeful. No take backsies. There's no reason to keep bringing the same princess back to the endgame over and over again. If you want to avoid a lot of repetition, all I'll say is bring the knife. It gives you more options. I wouldn't be doing you any favors to say much more. Sure, visual novels stretch the definition of what a game is. Beyond seeing what happens next, they aren't super exciting, and I can't understand why people would rather do anything else. But if you've ever cared about another person, this one is definitely worth your time. It's an incredible incredibly well written, thoughtful, and memorable experience. Do yourself a favor and slay the princess. If you made it this far, thanks for watching. These videos are made with the support from people like you. Let me know what you thought of the game in the comments. And if you haven't yet, consider subscribing. It really does go a long way. Till next time.